Good afternoon. This afternoon we are doing a money making mom scope. Finally, again, it's been a while since we've had a money making mom scope, and we're going to be talking about seven jobs moms can do from home. So, if you are a mom, if you um, are hoping to be a mom someday and you are looking for a way that you could earn income from home and you need some new ideas, um, this scope is for you. Welcome Rhonda, welcome everyone. So for those of you who are new, my name is Crystal Payne and I am the founder of MoneySavingMom.com and I am also the um, creator of the 14 day online course called Makeover Your Mornings and the second I'm trying to block a couple people that need to be blocked but comments are going so fast. Um, and I am also the author of the book, Money Making Mom, How Every Woman Can Earn More and Make a Difference. And um, this is available on um, Amazon as well as if you go to moneymakingmombook.com, you can sign up for my free five-day course on how I make a full-time income from home. So welcome, so glad to have you all here. And we are gonna be talking about seven ways that moms can earn money from home. And these are actually, um, this is from a post that I did for another site. It was called faithstreet.com. And they asked um, if I could come up with some simple things that moms could do from home. And so I thought that uh, maybe some of you, if you missed this post, I linked to it on Money Saving Mom, but for those of you who missed this post, it'd be fun for us to go through this as a scope. So. You're ready to dive right in. Number one is to take surveys. If you um, are not familiar with this, um, you can actually earn money by taking surveys. There are different companies that would love to know what consumers think. So you can take surveys and you can earn money by helping those different companies out, giving your advice, giving your opinions, and helping them to do market research. Um, if you go to moneysavingmom.com forward slash scope, there is, um, I will put a link, I don't know if there's a link right there, but I, at the end I will put a link to uh, my favorite survey companies because there are six different survey companies that I really, really love. And um, there are a lot of survey companies out there that aren't very legit or that they're just gonna take your name and information and they'll go sell it. To a bunch of places so um, they might actually have some surveys but they also basically they're making their money off of selling your information so you don't want that so I have six different survey companies that I really love but um, you're not gonna make a lot of money doing this but let's say that you wanted to do it while it was your kids nap time maybe um, you watch TV at night and you can do surveys while you do that if you have a little little blocks of time throughout the week spending some time on this and you can you know, earn a nice little side income from it. You're not going to get rich and it's going to be a lot of work, but it's a great way to be able to earn some spending cash. So number one is to take surveys. Number two is to clear out the clutter. You can make money by getting paid for your stuff. So for instance, um, there are different ways you can do this, like half.com or cashforbooks.net are places that you can sell your used books. Amazon also has a trade-in program where you can sell DVDs and books and CDs, and then they will give you Amazon credit for trading them in. The thing I love about Amazon's trade-in program is that it's completely free. In the sense of you go in, you type in the ISBN number for your items, they will tell you how much they'll pay you for it, and then um, they will give you a prepaid shipping label. You slap that on the box, you put it in the mail, and it's completely free to send in your items, and then you earn Amazon credit for doing that. Amazon credit can be used for groceries, for diapers, for basically anything that you need to buy. So it's kind of almost like making, you know, earning cash. And it's a great way to earn some money for your clutter. Now you're not going to make a whole lot of money off of it, but some items you will make some pretty decent Amazon credit and it's worth checking into because it really literally takes you about 15 seconds per item to type in the ISBN number and see how much they're going to pay you for it. If they decide when your item shows up at the Amazon headquarters that they do not think it's in the condition that you said it was in, they will just ship it back to you. 
for free. So it's a no risk sort of thing. Um, I will also, I can put a link to that on um, moneysavingmom.com forward slash scope. I'll put a link to uh, the post that I did that details that in uh, very specifically. There's also a link on moneysavingmom.com forward slash scope for this whole entire um, post on seven ways that moms can earn money from home. You can also sell your clutter on sites like Craigslist or Facebook garage sale sites. So if you have larger items, especially things like exercise equipment, baby equipment, even clothes, you can make good money off of Facebook garage sale sites or Craigslist. So look around your house, see, do you have things that you no longer need that you could earn money by getting rid of them? And number, uh, number three is to open an Etsy shop. Now, a lot of people think that Etsy is kind of one of those markets that's completely saturated. Well, I would disagree because in the last year, I have met quite a number of women who are making good money off of Etsy. Now, what I've heard from them is they say that you have to be very consistent, you have to work hard, you have to pay attention to what is working for people. You have to really stick with it for it not just 6 months. It's something that is going to take a few years to develop that that following and that client base, but if you can do that, you can earn good money off of Etsy. Probably not, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars, but a good income. I know some women who are earning even a full-time income off of Etsy. So opening an Etsy shop is um, a great way to be able to earn money from home. Um, number four, share your skills with the virtual world. So if you have an ex area of expertise or specific set of skills, you can most likely share those with the virtual world and earn money. I'm going to give you some examples of what I'm talking about. You could be a consultant. You could be an online tutor. You could be a counselor. There's online counseling um, programs now. A transcriptionist. There's such a need for transcription and especially um, legal, trans or legal proofreading, which is not exactly transcription, but it's kind of in the same thing. So proofreading is another thing. Um, um, and there is, I'll put another link to this as well. There's a course that you can go through that teaches you how to make money as a proofreader. And a number of my readers have gone through this course and um, they are now earning a good part-time or even full-time income off of proofreading. Web design, that is a huge market right now. And I will tell you that good web designers are in high demand and good blog designers especially um, there are never enough good blog designers. Most of the blog designers I know are self-taught and they are earning a really good income. You build up that client base, you build up that reputation, and then you will never run out of work to do. A project manager or a photo editor or an app developer. If you're not sure how to get started, two sites that I would recommend are Upwork.com and Fiverr.com. Um, yes, virtual assistants are a huge need. We're gonna talk about that in just a minute because I'm gonna make it a separate thing because it's such a big need. Um, so, and someone's saying you can coach. There are so many needs for coaches. I know there are people who do weight loss coaching. There are people who do business coaching. There are people who do um, coaching just in about every area, organizational coaches, life management coaches. So think about what is it that you are good at? What are you good at? And what would people, you know, what do people always come to you and say that they want to learn this from you or they are coming to you and they're asking you, so how do you do this? Or they're commenting and saying, you're really good at this. Is there a way that you could share that even in your local area or with the online world? The thing I love about online is that the world is your oyster. You can, you know, people from China can hire you, people from any other country can hire you, and so there's so much larger of a market when you go um, just outside of your local area. But there are some businesses that are really great for just your local area. Another option is to write. There are many sites that are in need of writers. Um, Examiner.com, Textbroker.com, Patch and Demand Studios, and eHow are all sites that they will hire you to write. Now, when you first start out with those sites, you're not going to make much. It's just like any 
any job. When you first start out, it's slow going and you have to be willing to stay the course. But if you're willing to stay the course, you can really start to see the fruit from that. Um, the site Upwork and Fiverr com also you can apply or post um, your job description and job abilities on there so if you have um, certain capabilities let's say you want to write blog posts or let's say you write copy for um, a specific type of market let's say you have experience in a certain type of field you could um, post that you have that ability and see if people will hire you. When you get some client base built up and you've got that experience and you've got that portfolio, there are so many jobs out there. The virtual world is just, I know so many people who are desperately looking for really, really, really good help um, and assisting with so many different virtual things, but writing is one of those things. And then, speaking of which, um, become a virtual assistant. Now, some of these things that we've talked about are a little bit like a virtual assistant, but a virtual assistant is basically someone who virtually assists someone else, and that can be in any field. But specifically, I wanted to talk about um, being an assistant for a blog owner or a website, um, a website owner, because there is massive need for this. Bloggers come to me all the time and they say, I need to find somebody who can help me with this, this, and this, and I just I can't find anybody. All the good VAs, as we call virtual assistants, VAs, are spoken for, and they are completely booked up with work. So there's a lot of need for this. Um, there are some keys to getting your foot in the door, and one of those keys is that you have to put yourself out there. You have to be willing to work for free to build up that portfolio, to build up the relationships, to build up that trust. So really think about how can you put yourself out there, get people to notice you, and really come alongside other bloggers and website owners and be of help and service to them. Instead of saying, you know, I have people all the time that are coming to me and saying, I want to work for you. It's very rare that someone comes and says, I see that you have this need for such and such, and I have these skills, and I would like to offer you, you know, this, um, could I do this six hour project for you, and I will do it for free or for X amount, um, just because I'm trying to build up my portfolio. Try, that is so much better of a way to get your foot in the door when you're offering a service to a blogger, you're seeing that they have a need, you're offering the solution for them, but you're not asking, you're not taking anything from them. It's kind of a very low risk or no risk, risk sort of thing for a blogger. And then that's how you get your foot in the door. And they see that you do great work. They see that you have this ability and then I bet they have some other jobs for you. So a virtual assistant, this is a market that is so hot and there's so much need. So think about, are you really good at data entry? Are you really good at answering comments or emails or helping people with um, formatting blog posts or working on things for someone's sidebar or um, helping to sell advertising? You know, what, it is, what is it that you would be really good at? Maybe it's social media. Maybe it's graphic design. And is there a way that you could offer your services to other bloggers? You could either be a virtual assistant for just one or two bloggers, or maybe you just do project by project basis on things. I know it, it works differently for different people, but think about what you think would work for you and then just put yourself out there and start trying stuff. Um, and if you are interested in um, more information on virtual assistant, um, I have a couple of resources that I can share with you. And if you just tweet at me or email me um, through my contact form on moneysavingmom.com, I'd be more than happy to share those with you. Uh, so many possibilities. I know, Jess, there's so much out there. When people say they're like, oh, there's nothing, there's nothing I can do. I'm like, there is something that you can do. You just have to be willing to knock on doors and not give up and keep trying and keep putting yourself out there. Okay, and then number seven, you knew that this was probably gonna be on my list, is to start your own blog. Um, blogging is a way that I know so many people making a part-time, full-time, or even more than a full-time income off of blogging. I'm obviously a big fan of it because I've been blogging for 10 years and, and that is the bread and butter of our business and that's really kind of the hub from which 
everything else comes out of. Uh, blogging is hard work, and it just like any of these other things, it takes time, it takes effort, there's no such thing as overnight success, but there's so much potential and possibility. If you go to moneysavingmom.com forward slash scope, I did a whole series on how to make money blogging, and you can um, follow, like just go through that series and I walk you through step by step how I earn an income, how I've set up my blog, and um, the affiliates that I use, and how bloggers make money and then use their blog as a springboard to be able to open doors like getting book deals and um, producing products and so much more. So that's at moneysavingmom.com forward slash scope. So, um, I there's so much more that I could say with all of that, but um, I just wanted to kind of throw a bunch of stuff out there so that those of you who are feeling discouraged and feeling like, you know what? I just, there's nothing for me. I just want to encourage you, never say that. There is so much potential. If you're but willing to keep, you know, just putting one foot in front of the other, to keep knocking on those doors, to leave no stone unturned, to keep improving yourself as a person, as a writer, as a blogger, as a graphic designer, as a website designer, whatever it is that you want to do and you're passionate about and you feel called to do and you love doing, whatever it is, improve yourself. Continue to improve and improve and improve. And then start knocking on those doors. Start looking for ways to offer your services, be of help, and make it a win-win for other people. And don't give up. You're going to get a lot of no's. I will just tell you that. I get way more no responses and rejections than yeses. And when someone rejects your offer, that is not a rejection of you. It's just a, you know what? This doesn't work for me right now. I have to say no to people all the time. I hate saying no, but I can't say yes to everyone. I can only say yes to a few things. I don't always need a new graphic designer, or a website designer, or writer, or whatever it is that someone has to offer. And so when I say, you know what? Not right now. I, I don't need that. That's not a rejection of you as a person. That's just me saying, you know what? I don't need that service right now, but don't take those as a personal rejection. Just take it as a, you know what, I'm going to go knock on another door and another door and another door. When I first started blogging and first started looking for ways to earn an income from home, I had to knock on so many doors. I had to put myself out there and I had to keep trying and keep going and keep emailing people and keep learning and keep making mistakes. And when I was willing to do that and determined that I wasn't going to give up, that's when I started to find little things that worked and then another little thing that worked and another little thing that worked. And pretty soon, then within a few years, which it was a long few years, but within a few years, then we were making a full-time income online. But it was because I didn't give up when I got that rejection and got that rejection and got that rejection. So don't give up. That's my biggest advice to you. Keep improving yourself as a person and don't give up. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. Be sure to go to moneysavingmom.com forward slash scope where I have not only the um, link to this post that has a lot of links in it, so um, all the different things we talked about, and then I will also um, put some extra links on there for some of the things that were not linked in this article. So thanks so much for joining me. I hope you're having a wonderful afternoon, and I will look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Hopefully around 7.30 a.m. Hopefully I will be on time tomorrow for our morning motivation show. So have a great afternoon.